uh, a number of updates for you today. We're each going to speak a little bit here in, in various areas. Evacuations are a number one priority. I'm going to have the sheriff uh, speak to that in a moment. I can just tell you in terms of a total number, though, that uh, uh, our dispatch office has contacted approximately 1,600 phone lines. May or may not correspond to that exact number of homes, but that gives you a ballpark idea of the magnitude of the evacuations. And again, the sheriff will speak to that in more detail in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to move on and talk a little bit about the fire itself. Uh, at, uh, as of 10 p.m. last night, uh, the fire was estimated at 8,000 acres. At this point, our uh, operations command is working to get aircraft up to get a better estimate. Uh, there was clearly significant fire growth over the night, and so uh, uh, it's, it's much, much bigger than that, but we don't have an exact number yet. We should have something later today. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, we're still at 0% containment. The focus has really been the evacuations that, again, we'll talk more about in a minute, uh, life safety, structure protection, uh, throughout the night and, and into today as well. So that continues. Uh, we did uh, confirm at this point that uh, at least 18 structures have been damaged or destroyed by the fire. We don't have details yet on what type of structures and uh, to what extent those may be homes or cabins or outbuildings, that sort of thing. So we're still working on that. Um, obviously a number of areas have been evacuated. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, we're still working to confirm uh, the details there and the sheriff will speak to that shortly. Uh, talk a little bit about the conditions today. Uh, as you notice, it's a little bit cooler. Uh, that is helpful, though uh, not, uh, not a major factor right now. I think the, 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 the best thing about the weather is it just simply makes it more comfortable for the firefighters that we have out on the scene. It was very, very hot yesterday. The train is very steep and they have to carry in lots of gear and are working very hard to contain the fire and working very long shifts. So the cooler weather will help with that. Uh, it doesn't hurt uh, in terms of the fire, but it's not a significant factor right now. Uh, winds today, uh, according to fire command, are expected to be in the 15 to 25 mile an hour range with gust up to 40. So that uh, certainly remains a concern right now. It's, it's apparently calm, but uh, they could pick up later. Uh, winds are expected to be generally out of the northwest all day long. Uh, the winds really shaped the fire. We'll try to get a, a map out to the media here later today, but uh, that caused it to grow rapidly. Uh, the, the perimeter is quite large, and again, we'll get a number on that. There are significant unburned areas, though, within the fire, too, because it skipped and jumped and, and, and moved pretty, pretty quickly. So uh, we'll try to get more information on that out to you here shortly. And I do have some maps I could just show you here after the briefing to give you a quick feel for that. Uh, the conditions, again, uh, are difficult. We have very dry grasses. Really, the, the grasses in the area, excuse me, uh, never really fully uh, greened up. Uh, I'll repeat that again, the grasses in the area never really fully greened up. And so it, it may look somewhat green, but it's actually still very, very dry. Uh, relative humidities in the single digits, which is quite low. Uh, and uh, in terms of the growth of the fire, uh, over the, the uh, last uh, 12 hours or so, According to Operations Command, the fire had shown a capability to move as much as a mile and a half uh, in an hour, so very rapid rates of growth, and again, that remains a concern. Um, resources on scene, aircraft, we have uh, air attack, lead aircraft to guide the planes in. We have, uh, as planned, two uh, Type 1 helicopters, two Type 2 helicopters, or, or I'm sorry, two Type 1 helicopters, which are the large helicopter tankers, two Type 3 helicopters, which are the smaller uh, helicopters, and then um, uh, two Canadian air tankers assisting, and then two single-engine air tankers on scene. We have eight crews and uh, approximately 250 firefighting personnel on the scene and approximately 15 engines at this point, plus lots of support personnel from uh, our agency and others and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, in addition, uh, and the sheriff may want to talk more about this as well too, but uh, uh, we are uh, concerned that our uh, Buckhorn Mountain repeaters are in some jeopardy due to the fire, and so uh, the communications crew is looking at alternative repeaters that could be used if necessary, and then we're uh, focusing fire suppression and protection efforts on those important communication facilities so that we can all uh, uh, have have that in place. Obviously, that's very critical at this point. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Sheriff Smith to talk more about the evacuation. 
Good morning. Um, as uh, Nick mentioned, we had a lot of personnel that started out on this that are have done full 24-hour shifts. Uh, we're trying to get them a little rest as new personnel and new crews come in. Uh, last night was uh, a very difficult night. I left about 12 or 1 in the morning at that point. Uh, we had fire down in Poudre Park and had made evacuations. We expected to evacuate, but we thought it was likely to be today before we had to evacuate. Um, but it burned down in. I know we, we lost some structures in there. Uh, we don't have confirmations. We basically closed the Poudre Canyon um, and are, are trying to evaluate. What really was difficult last night is this fire came through. Uh, as you realize, the wind shifted and it's gone in a horseshoe shape. So uh, as it ran north and somewhat to the east yesterday, it pushed further out to the east and then pushed back south. And so the burn area came back around. And uh, as Nick mentioned, we have a lot of unburned uh, within there. Uh, our, really what we're doing right now is continuing to focus. Life safety is always top priority. So the evacuations are priority one. We have deputies and a lot of staff working in the south end uh, evacuating the, uh, the areas of Redstone Canyon and the neighborhood just north, northwest of uh, Horsetooth Reservoir. So we're, we're continuing to work on that. Uh, second major priority is structure protection. Uh, significant crews were out overnight and continue today in structure protection in the areas where they can. Uh, having been through this fire, I can tell you there's some areas it was running, it was in the trees, uh, very, very intense fire. Other areas it's been crawling and moving through the grasses with less intense. In those areas, they're, they're more likely to be able to uh, protect a structure without endangering firefighters unreasonably. Um, so that's the second major thing we're doing. Uh, we also, now that uh, daylight is here and uh, we're getting crews a little bit uh, replenished, uh, going back in to find out what happened last night, where the burns may have been. Uh, the reality is we just don't know what all it hit last night. It was, as you saw, a lot of glowing, a lot of fire. Uh, we hope to make some confirmations of what's been done. Uh, with the smoke being what it is, aircraft can't see a whole lot into there either. Um, next major thing that we're working on today is, as we mentioned before, we, we've narrowed it down to one unconfirmed report uh, of someone who may not have made it out of the fire. At this time, I will not comment further on where that is, or, but I can tell you we're working uh, with daylight now between fire crews and investigators to uh, get back, see if we can uh, put any kind of confirmation on that. Lastly, fire origin. Uh, we hope today, uh, with uh, conditions what they are, to be able to get some uh, fire origin folks and investigators down to uh, look at that area as well and uh, see if we can start work on that. Once again, absolutely no comment as, as to what we have there. We just haven't gotten in, but we hope to be able to get back there today. So uh, those are the major priorities. Once again, uh, I cannot speak highly enough, uh, first of all, for the citizens up here and the level of cooperation and assistance. Secondly, with the cooperating agencies, be they law, fire, uh, non-governmental organizations such as the Red Cross, uh, this community has really come together um, I, I just I, I can't say enough uh, for those efforts and we continue to work together. With that, I would uh, like uh, Chief Tom DeMint to speak a few words as to what Poudre Fire Authority is currently doing up here for the residents in their district. Okay, uh, this morning at about 4 a.m. we got a call that the uh, fire had moved into Poudre Fire Authority's uh, response area, our jurisdiction, uh, the west boundaries uh, go pretty much up to Well Rock Road in Risk Canyon and uh, all the way past Gateway Park in Poudre Canyon. So we had a lot of fire exposure there. We have evacuations all along our western boundary which goes south uh, to the south end of Horsetooth Reservoir. So Redstone Canyon has been evacuated, Mill Canyon Estates uh, and those surrounding neighborhoods have been evacuated as well. As Sheriff Smith said, our number one priority is life safety. Evacuation is paramount. Uh, our, our crews will do the best. We've ramped up our staffing to where uh, every reserve brush wildland type apparatus that we have is staffed, uh, ready to respond. In fact, uh, they're, out on, uh, they're out protecting structures at this time. So the main thing is to encourage people to follow the evacuation orders. That's, that's critical. And uh, we have a presence uh, with the Poudre Fire Authority. We're staffed up in the cooperation that Sheriff Smith talked about between the agencies is excellent. We, we go through this a lot. We train for this. Uh, our, we have some of the top wildland experts 
in the country that work for Poudre Fire Authority. We're very fortunate, and they are. We're having to get some of those people rested right now, as Sheriff Smith said, but uh, they're working on the fire. And the other thing is watching the spirit of community, watching the citizens evacuate, follow those evacuation orders, really kind of lets you know what this community is all about. So that's where we're at with PFA. So I'll turn it over to Aaron. Thanks, Tom. So just a quick update um, from your American Red Cross. First, I just thanks to um, you know law, fire, everyone who's out, just making sure that we're making a really efficient and effective response to this fire. Um, knowing these individuals, uh, there's always that effort to just protect life and protect homes. Um, they're doing everything they can and um, just really appreciated it. Um, also, you know, just thanks for helping you know, to the media. Thanks for helping us tell the story that's out there, keeping our communities informed of what's going on with this fire. Really a tough one. Uh, your American Red Cross has shelters um, for residents, the evacuation centers, both at Cash Lapooter Middle School. That'll also be an area where we're going to do community information meetings, much like this, um, for residents uh, that have been affected as well. Um, we'll be doing those throughout the day. We also have a facility opened at um, the ranch at the 4-H McKee building, uh, which is an overflow. We're working in partnership with Salvation Army for feeding. Uh, for La with Larimer Humane Society for taking care of uh, pets and animals. They're basically taking, you know, the way they say it is goats down at their shelter, um, anything larger out there at the McKee at the, at the Ranchway Feed Building. Um, we just really want to say thanks to the community for support. Uh, it's, al it's always amazing in northern Colorado to watch how everybody comes together to make sure that families are supported during times of disaster. Another piece that we want to get out there for those families that are affected, um, they can, if you're, if you're evacuating from your home, we ask people to go to safeandwell.org. That's safeandwell.org and get yourself registered. That lets family members around the nation know um, where you are, that you're evacuated, and that you're in good hands. Um, thanks for everything. At this time, I'd like to just open it up for questions for a few minutes. Chief Demet, we were talking about some of the evacuations and some of the structures that have been burned. Where is the main concentration of those structures that have been burned so far? I, I think it's, and Sheriff Smith, can, and you can help me with that too. Yeah. I think it's throughout the entire fire from the start yesterday through what it burned last night. There's no really one single concentration. The concentration that we're seeing in Poudre Fire Authorities area is just up Risk Canyon. Uh, it's where we have units in protecting structures right now. And we know we've lost one structure uh, toward the mouth of Risk Canyon at this time in Poudre Fire Authorities area. And that's all That's all I want to comment on that until we make sure, sure that everybody know knows. Any more of those concentration areas for the structures what we understood originally is likely there was uh, structures uh, damaged or lost by old flowers roads that came through. Now, let me preface that by saying that uh, most of that came from the air. We didn't have people in there, but the air resources told us they thought there were structures there. Um, the uh, Poudre Park area, uh, we're told from uh, Poudre Canyon Fire that there were some structures lost in there, as well as the one that uh, Chief Dement mentioned. Uh, part of what we're going to do is we've been working with Risk Canyon to get their folks up this morning. They want to start checking those areas uh, to see what else we have for structures, but that's the confirmations right now. Sheriff, can you say anything more about uh, unconfirmed report of somebody not making it out? As I mentioned before, no, I, I won't at this point. It wouldn't. It would. It, at this point, we're not going to compromise any of that information. Uh, we want to try to get that nailed down. So I'm, I'm going to respectfully hold off and respect any potential family. Uh, let me add to this. Uh, there's been uh, a significant impact on the folks that live up here, as you're aware. Um, first of all, people who have lost homes, who have lost property, uh, potentially loss of life, but uh, even those that haven't have had to have had to evacuate their homes. Uh, very, very difficult situation for all the folks here. All right, uh, we've been getting the latest now on the uh, fire burning up in Larimer County right now. That's uh, Larimer County there Sheriff Justin the Smith there speaking, uh, giving us an update on the High Park fire. The latest update right now, there was significant growth in the fire overnight. Uh, the last estimate coming in at 10 o'clock last night, that was 8,000 acres, but that number is expected to go up uh, today as crews get an aircraft into that burn area to get a better uh, estimate on the acreage uh, that's been burned so far. 18 structures damaged. 
damaged so far in this fire. We did get a little information about uh, where some of those structures may have been. We are, are learning that the Wrist Canyon area was badly hit by this fire. Also, the Old Flowers Road area and Poudre Park uh, right now. Uh, we do know there, those areas were hard hit by this fire. And crews are actually in the Wrist Canyon area right now uh, trying to protect some structures there. At least one unconfirmed report right now of an unaccounted for person with this fire. Uh, crews are working today to try to locate that person, but officials not willing to give up uh, much more information on that person. I should mention a citizen briefing is scheduled for 945 at Cash Laputer Middle School. Also another one is scheduled for 1045 this morning at the McKee eva uh, Evacuation Center. And we've also learned within the past few minutes that uh, Governor John Hickenlooper is headed up to Larimer County and will be meeting with uh, some citizens up there this morning.